some of you have probably heard, I mean, it was even made on the front page of some newspapers about this uh, detection of gravitational waves last week in early February 2016. So I just want to explain to you what is a gravitational wave and why do we care? So it all goes back to about a, almost 100 years ago exactly when Einstein came out with his general theory of relativity. And what general relativity does is it, it explains gravity. So rather than thinking of gravity as this mysterious, magical, invisible force that, for example, keeps the Earth orbiting around the Sun, the way Einstein's relativity describes gravity is uh, massive objects bend space-time. You can just think of it as bending space rather than space-time, but technically it's space-time. And so what happens is if we draw a schematic diagram here of our solar system, here we have the Sun, and the Sun is a very massive object. It weighs about 300,000 times the mass of the Earth. And so it creates this enormous valley, this enormous what we call gravity well in space-time. Now, this is supposed to be the Earth, and normally things would fall down the slope of this gravitational well, which would correspond to objects falling into the Sun due to the Sun's gravity. But this is how relativity describes it, is this slope, and normally things would slide down this gravitational well towards the Sun. But of course the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, and so that motion allows it to keep itself up in the gravitational well, and so the Earth orbits around the Sun forever and ever and ever. In this kind of uh, three-dimensional tube, the, the, uh, or cone you can think of it, the Earth is orbiting around the Sun. So what is a gravitational wave? Now imagine we took the Sun and we shook it. If we shake it violently, take this object 300,000 times the mass of the Earth and shake it, what would happen is that this gravitational well would stop being smooth and it would start having ripples. And these ripples would be ripples in space-time, and these ripples are what we call gravitational waves. It's basically, literally, when you take a very, very massive object and shake it, there will be waves in space-time, and that's what gravitational waves are. Now, luckily, you know, it's impossible to shake the sun, so the Earth is safe here. But what was actually detected by this LIGO experiment last week was the infall and merger of two black holes. Now, what does that mean? So these two black holes were each about 30 times the mass of the Sun. They're actually a lot smaller because black holes are very, very small, although they're very massive. So imagine taking two objects that are tiny but 30 times as heavy as the Sun. They are in a very, very tight orbit. You probably can't even see that on the screen, but they're, they're in a very, very tight orbit around each other. And that's equivalent, if you're looking at one of those objects, it's equivalent to shaking it. Right? So there's these two things orbiting around each other. Each one is being shaken back and forth by the other one, creating these gravitational waves. Now, it turns out that emitting gravitational waves requires energy because, you know, just if you take a skipping rope, it takes energy to create waves in a skipping rope. It takes, you know, effort. So the waves that are being created when these two black holes are spinning around each other actually steals energy from the black hole system. And what happens is the orbits get closer and closer and closer together because they're emitting energy in the form of gravitational waves. Now in the last fraction of a second, we have these two objects uh, with decaying orbits. Orbits getting smaller and smaller, they're getting closer and closer together, and in the last fraction of a second, they are orbiting, they, you start to actually hear, you can actually hear it, you can hear the gravitational waves start at a frequency of about 10 hertz, which is a very kind of low bass sound that you would hear at a concert, you know, boom, boom, boom. And in the last fraction of a second, they are spinning around so quickly, it's about 250 hertz. What that means is these objects, each 30 times the mass of the sun, were spinning around each other 250 times per second. At that instant, they were so close together they actually touched, and then the two black holes merged. And so this frequency, this, this vibration of space-time, basically can be, you can channel that into a speaker, and literally you can hear this whoop, and it's almost that fast. It's about a half a second or a quarter of a second. These black holes are spinning together in the last, in the last fraction of a second. It just goes whoop. And that's all you hear, and then at that point the two black holes are merged, the orbits are gone, and the waves stop.
and it's really cool. And, and it, there's actually even a comedian that's, that's already, you know, kind of joked about how the NSF spent $1.1 billion to hear a quarter of a second go, go whoop. But let me describe where that sound came from, okay? So here's the waves, the hypothetical waves in our solar system if you shake the sun. Now, if you were to actually go back to the surface of the Earth and look at ha what happens to um, space-time near the Earth when a gravitational wave passes by, this is a crude depiction of what happens to space-time actually on Earth. As a gravitational wave passes by, what happens is that space-time, remember, space-time can be bent, just like we have on the picture here of the Sun bending space in the vicinity of, of the solar system. When a gravitational wave passes by the Earth, space-time actually vibrates. It vibrates in the, what's called, we, we call a longitudinal direction. So what happens is the space-time in the vicinity of the Earth kind of, it compresses in one direction and, and expands in the other direction, and then it reverses. So you get, if you imagine a circle on the surface of the Earth, when the gravitational wave passes by, that circle deforms this way into a flat ellipse, and then this way into a tall ellipse, and it kind of goes back and forth like this. And this is what was happening with the LIGO experiment. The LIGO experiment was an L-shaped um, um, experiment. Each leg of the L was about three or four miles long, I forget exactly, several miles long. And as the gravitational wave went by, one leg of the experiment was expanded while the other was compressed. And then when the second part of the wave came through, it was the opposite. The horizontal leg was expanded and the vertical leg was compressed. This, of course, was actually happening 250 times per second as the last instant of the gravitational wave passed by. And the way they detected this L shape expanding and contracting was they had light traveling back and forth along these two ends. And using the light, they can actually detect the distance from one end of the L to the other and to the vertical end and the other. And they actually detected using light traveling through these um, tubes, this fact that space-time was vibrating. So that's what we detected. Billion dollars spent to detect general relativities or Einstein's prediction of uh, how general relativity would make space-time vibrate when two black holes uh, collide and merge together. So this is, you know, fascinating from a scientific perspective. But uh, you might want to ask, you know, why do we care? Really, it's just pure science. Why do we care about general relativity? It turns out that general relativity even has an effect right here on Earth. So if we go back to our diagram here, the Sun creates a gravitational well in the vicinity of the entire solar system, but the Earth is also a massive object, and so it actually creates a small gravitational well of its own around itself. And it turns out that this gravitational well bends space-time in such a way that GPS satellites, you know those satellites, you know, we all have iPhones or, or whatever, you know, your Android phone, you pull up Google Maps and it tells you where you are on the surface of the Earth to a precision of a few feet. We can only do that because of general relativity. If we didn't account, if the, if the computations inside your iPhone did not, or your phone did not take into account general relativity, we would not be able to pinpoint our position on Earth as accurately um, as if we did, it, did um, account for it. So general relativity even has very, very everyday applications. The satellites that are traveling around the Earth that provide us with our location would be very inaccurate. They would be much, much less accurate if we didn't account for general relativity. So understanding this is not only important from a scientific perspective, trying to understand the universe, uh, but also from a very practical perspective right here on the Earth.